semifinalist players this afternoon. Es un placer para mí presentarles a todos ustedes a los semifinalistas de esta Copa Mundial. Les pido por favor un fuerte aplauso para de Suecia, Jenny Wengner. De Colombia, Rocío Restrepo. De Filipinas, tenemos Visaya Lin. Y por último, de Malasia, Siti Safiya. Las cuatro participantes en la semifinal jugarán la primer lugar sembrada en número uno, Jenny Webner, contra la sembrada número cuatro, City Safiya. Las sembradas en segundo y tercer lugar pasarán a las pistas de práctica para hacer sus calentamientos. Las jugadoras tienen derecho a hacer dos lanzamientos por cada pista y la sembrada número uno, Jenny Webner escogerá en qué pista se deberá empezar. Okay, now it's time to begin. The number one seeded Sweden, Jenny Webner, will bowl against Malaysia, Siri Safiya. And the second place and the third place seeded will go to the practice lanes for warming up. They can do two balls per lane. And the number one seeded, Jenny Webner, will choose which lane she would like to start. Les pedimos a todos los asistentes, recuerden tener sus teléfonos celulares apagados durante el juego y cuando las, personas, cuando las jugadoras estén en el approach, favor de eh, moverse lo menos posible para evitar distracciones a las jugadoras. Comentario, Jenny Webner es la campeona defensora de nuestra pasada 52 edición de la Copa del Mundo. Please. A kind of reminder to turn your cell phones off while they are bowling. Please, we kindly ask you to have your cellular phones off while the bowlers are in action. At the same time, if you can move at the least possible while they, when one of the bowlers is on the approach, so that we can avoid disturbance. At the same time, please, we kindly ask you to avoid flash, no flash, photo flash, please. De la misma manera, les pedimos a todos, si van a tomar fotos, lo realicen sin flash, para evitar distracciones en las jugadoras.
es hora de empezar. Jenny Webner empezará. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Welcome back to Bull good TV. Luck. My name is Matt Canizaro, and you're watching live coverage of the 2017 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup. This is the women's semifinals. We've got our number one seed, Jenny Wegner of Sweden, uh, up here to defend her title. She's taking on from Malaysia, CT Raman. Uh, CT looking to make some history as well this week at the World Cup. Uh, no Malaysian woman has ever won and CT no stranger to being the first. I'll get into that and more. Uh, joining me today on our women's broadcast, Erin McCarthy of Team USA. She bowled this week, bowled very well, just missed making the TV show, uh, but uh, that, uh, that loss is our gain here in the booth. A lot of great information and insight coming your way here. Erin, welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, so Yenny Wegner is gonna start things off here. And she did what she has done all week long, and she just threw a strike to open the match. Uh, and uh, she led this event from game number two. Started a little bit slow, shot 192. 300 came next, only one of the week, uh, and then led wire to wire from that point. week competitor bolt on a 41 foot oil pattern another great shot by CT I would expect nothing less here uh, and this 41 foot pattern generally uh, a little bit higher scoring uh, especially on a high friction surface like we have here in Hermosillo Mexico at bowl 300 uh, third time the city has hosted the event six time for Mexico and what a great host, uh, very lively atmosphere all week long. And now, again, history, uh, a lot of potential today. So cool storylines. Again, the first one, uh, no Malaysian woman has ever won this event. Uh, and also on the men's side, uh, Ahmad Riwaz uh, for Malaysia. So uh, for Malaysia and Colombia, the possibility of winning both titles. That's only happened one time in history. But while we get settled in here, uh, you know, let's talk about what we're gonna see today. Uh, and now that we're down to our final four players, we've got our top seed, Andy Wegner of Sweden, taking on CT Raman of Malaysia. Next match will be Rocio Rostrepo of Colombia, taking on Chris Alain Tabora of the Philippines. Those are our two and three seeds. And the two winners will meet for the title in this shootout style finals. Uh, all competitors this week, bold. 24 games of qualifying over four days. The top 24 advance to another round of eight games. And after 32 games, pinfall totals determine the top eight who advanced to round robin match play for eight games. Uh, a lot to say in, uh, in the uh, few minutes that we have here. Let's take a look up at the scores now. So there you see both players starting with the doubles. So Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about the oil pattern and what you saw this week and uh, what we can expect to see uh, during today's matches? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, it's 41 feet and this is definitely a higher friction surface. So there was a lot of striking going on. Uh, if not striking, definitely hitting the pocket. Um, I think it was just about you know, if you look at the different styles that the women have, you know, Yenny's got a pretty long wingspan. She can do something that not any other woman can do. I think that's why she was so successful. And uh, CD's obviously been a, a pretty good competitor, even out on the PWBA Tour. So I think we should expect to see quite a few strikes. Um, I noticed that they're throwing the same equipment that they threw all through qualifying, all through uh, the top 24, and then even the, the eight games of match play. So I think it'll really be about who can strike the most and obviously you need to make the spares that you do leave too. Well, at this point, if, uh, if nobody leaves anything, <laughs> uh, spare shooting will not be a factor uh, in this first semifinal. Uh, for those of you just joining us, thank you. You're watching the women's semifinals here at the 2017 Cubica AMF Bowling World Cup. Uh, both players now starting with three consecutive strikes. Uh, this year's event for Yenny, uh, a little bit different. Last year in Shanghai, she made her World Cup debut. Uh, bowled the whole event inside the bowling center. 
And then we had a special arena finals. And she never was higher than the number four uh, in the standings the entire week. Qualified as the number four seed, uh, went on to beat the number one seed in the debut of this shootout style semifinals. So uh, the format worked out to her advantage last year. Uh, and now we'll see if she can do the same from the number one position. Uh, looking for back-to-back -back titles to be the fourth woman to achieve that and the first one since Clara Guerrero did so in 2014 and 15 for Colombia. And both players now still perfect. In our first semifinal, there's a look at the scoreboard. We've got the TV feed coming in uh, from the fine folks here at Telemax, Channel 6 in Hermosillo. And these players not messing around. Uh, getting up there and quickly throwing the strikes. We've got a two and a half hour live TV show today, Aaron. Uh, and you have bowled on live TV. Uh, can you tell us uh, anything about the pressures? And last time for you especially, uh, suffering an injury, could not sit down during the, uh, the entire production. That is correct. Um, you know, live TV is always different than when you're just bowling. Um, you know, the bowl without the, the cameras, obviously, but the lights are a little bit different. And then there's a little bit added pressure. It's just a matter of how you deal with it. You know, some people, it doesn't really affect. Others, they kind of rise to the occasion. Um, obviously, just a little bit of added pressure, though. <laughs> More eyes on you. Well, we've got a nice crowd here. Uh, the support from the community has been great. Uh, and now for Yenny, the first one to falter here in our first semifinal, the 10 pin denying her uh, her fourth consecutive strike. So uh, on the bench there, uh, CT Rama now in control of our first semifinal match. And for Yenny, and speeding a little bit of history again, uh, the only time our country swept the titles was 1986. Uh, and in doing so, it actually was her coach this week at the World Cup, Peter Young. Uh, so very cool uh, that uh, the player coach, both with World Cup titles and had James Gruffman for Sweden been able to advance uh, uh, the possibility of uh, coaching both players would have been pretty cool. Uh, but uh, Yenny likes history, so we'll see. Uh, she can get back on track here now uh, after the 10 pin. But again, great storylines on both sides on the men's field. We'll have that coming up next. Uh, Ildemar Ruiz Jr., what a run he had yesterday, uh, starting with the final game of the round of 24. Uh, Ahmad Muaz of Malaysia uh, just really turned it on, had the highest block of the week, and uh, stayed around the top of the standings for the last couple of days. Jacob Butchoff of the United States, a disaster for Yenny. Big four there on lane 19. Uh, on the men's side, Jacob Butchoff shooting 277, the final game of match play to jump from out of the cut in fifth place into third place. And we'll see him later today. Uh, and the final one on the men's side, uh, Oscar Rodriguez of Colombia. So meaning that both Colombia and Malaysia have a shot now at joining Sweden in the history books. So that is the rundown, and now Yenny, trouble. Going to shoot the big four, so get two. Almost got a bounce out there. Uh, she didn't make many mistakes this week. Uh, pulled, uh, the way she put it, very poorly uh, at the end of match play, but she had enough pins saved up uh, from earlier in the week that she was able to uh, maintain her spot at number one. But Aaron, you were down there in the trenches with Yenny. Uh, she didn't scoreboard watch very much. She did her thing. Um, did you get a chance to, to kind of look at her and, and watch what she was doing at all? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously she was very successful during qualifying and then during the, the top 24, but I think there's just a little bit of over-under ball reaction during the top eight. Um, I don't know if she was throwing it poorly or maybe uh, the transitions. They were definitely a little bit more touchy during the, the round of eight, though, that I noticed, and I know that a couple of the other females noticed as well. So but luckily she had that cushion to help her get to the top four here. I don't think she was expecting that big four either based on her reaction as soon as she let it go. For Malaysia, Raman now giving a few back. So leaving the 2-4-10. And I think just watching up here for so many games this week, uh, we definitely saw uh, at times it was easy to have early hook or hang to the outside. Uh, so the pattern designed to be a, a little bit easier. What a pickup for CT. She's not messing around today. Absolutely not. Uh, 
but we saw the early hook and the hang spots. Uh, so that made it more challenging. You guys were constantly uh, thinking through strategies and equipment. Um, how did you combat that during the week? I mean, even though there were a lot of strikes thrown, so it seemed like during qualifying and all the rest of the games, but you really had to make sure that you had the correct surface and the correct ball in your hand because you could be getting to the pocket just fine, but whether or not you were carrying was a different story. So I think really making sure that you had the correct ball roll as well as the correct equipment um, obviously played a factor into people's successes. Uh, there's just so much friction, like you said, the early hook or maybe not enough hook. It almost seemed cliffed at times depending on the pair that you went to. So it, it wasn't as easy as what it might have looked like based on the scores. All right, so after the hot start for both players, uh, things changing a little bit here. And, uh, you know, you guys bowled six game blocks throughout qualifying and then two eight game blocks with less people on a pair, uh, some pairs uh, on the ladies' side. Um, what about the transition of the pattern? Uh, we saw, you know, for you guys, Jacob especially, uh, first day uh, grinding on the fresh and then as the lanes opened up, pulled great. The rest of the week was the opposite. Crushed the fresh and had trouble as they transitioned based on who they followed. Um, how quickly did they transition and how often were you making moves? I think they, they transitioned very quickly. I mean, even within the first couple of frames after you've added in uh, 10 minutes of practice, uh, within that first game, you could see transition, especially depending on how many righties and lefties you had on the pair. And I think there was also a difference between whether you bowled the morning block or the afternoon block. Uh, the afternoon blocks tended to have more friction, especially early. Uh, at least that's what myself and actually many of the other players agreed as well. But even within this first game, as we can kind of see, there seems to be a transition. And if you do go high on one shot, it's like you want to make sure that you don't do it on the next shot, but you might leak it a little too far right or have the opposite effect. So we did see that uh, players on one lane uh, and then either overthinking or making the adjustment on the other lane uh, and doing exactly what you just described, yeah. uh, going high and then uh, leaving a washout on the very next shot. But Obviously not something that you want to do, but it's easier said than done sometimes. Uh, on the way to the number one seat on the women's side, Yenny Wegener out averaging the entire field, uh, averaging 222.85 through 40 games. Very impressive. And uh, Rocio Strepo not far behind at uh, 220. Uh, but yes, the ladies uh, throwing a whole lot of strikes this week. And, and Yenny again was very, uh, she said, tired and disappointed last night with. Uh, the way she bowled, knowing that uh, it's kind of the anti-momentum going into the TV show, but you can't uh, you can't win it if you're not in it. And now in the shootout, uh, you know she's in it. It doesn't matter. And she had some pressure from Rocio to uh, for Rocio to go around her that last game, but again, uh, really that would have just been a difference of who she was bowling today. Uh, and you just never know on any day. I, I would say these four players, clearly, you know, four of the best in the world. It's a pretty level, level talent field. All right, here's Yenny, seventh frame. Mm -hmm. Back on track. Take a look at the scoreboard now. CT picking up that split gives her the advantage here at the halfway point of our first women's semifinal. We have bowl 300, Hermesillo Mako, 2017 Cubic AMF Bowling World Cup. We'll have the men's semifinals coming up at the conclusion of the women's final. Trouble again on the right lane for CT. Aaron, what's going on out there? I, I almost think that maybe because her last shot was light, it was a little bit outside, and she probably just over-corrected a bit. It's easy to do in these situations. You only have 10 frames, and you have to make the best 10 shots possible. <laughs> it's over before you know it. <coughs> uh, even if you're missing by a board or two on the inside with this high friction, it makes it seem like a whole lot more. Right, so CT gets one. 
on the spare attempt. And now we have ourselves a brand new match. Appreciate everybody being here. My name is Matt Canizaro alongside PWBA, Professional Women's Bowling Association Superstar and Team USA member Erin McCarthy. Uh, we see some familiar names in the chat room, so thank you to everybody for joining us. Uh, I know my compadres at home uh, helping me out here, making sure things are situated. Aaron Smith and Emil Williams Jr., uh, Brandy Silva, Bella Clementine, uh, Kathy Kavicki even checking in in the chat room to say hello. Uh, so we appreciate all the support and all you folks out there. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat room. We'll see if we can get those answered. Uh, things are going to move along pretty quickly today, uh, especially with these players now back on the strike train, as they say. Take a look up top now as we wait for Yenny to step up. Got ourselves a six pin match. Yenny, the defending champion on the women's side, and was not messing around this week. Let's see what happens here. Another great shot. Uh, we saw a lot of those. She actually bowled 300, the only one of the week. One pair to the right, 21 and 22. Uh, we caught that here live on Bowl TV. There's a video of the 10th frame in the playlist for the Cubic AMF World Cup 2017. Uh, remember, subscribe to Bowl TV. And when we do cool stuff like that, uh, you'll be the first to know. You won't miss any of it. Uh, Bowl TV is the place to be, and I guarantee you, in 2018, it will be even better. Uh, more great coverage of events like the World Cup. Uh, we've had viewers from all over the globe this weekend. We definitely appreciate it. So do the players. Uh, but you can check out Yenny's 300 there. Only one of the week. High game on the men's side uh, was 297. We'll have those award presentations later today as well. Uh, but here's Yenny trying to become the first player since Clara Guerrero in 2015. Doesn't sound like that long ago to win back-to-back -back World Cups. It's only happened three times in history. She's looking to become the fourth and trouble there on lane 19. This is our ninth frame. Take a look at the scores in just one moment. Yeni, the number one seed, CT Raman number four. Uh, coming up next, we will have number two, Rocio Restrepo of Colombia, and Chris Ellen Tabora of the Philippines, our number three seed. And Yeni with the open frame. CT steps up, quick peek at the scores. And now back to the action. Night frame, CT Raman. She delivers in the ninth. Next score for her, 239. Best that Yanni Wagner can do, 207. as we've seen so many times before. Closing this thing out here quickly. And intensely, she gets fired up. She doesn't say much, 
Uh, but uh, the players from Malaysia, we saw them find great success this year on the PWBA Tour. Professional Women's Bowling Association, CT, the first Malaysian player to win a PWBA Tour title, defeated her own teammate on the way. Uh, but the very next week, Lee Jane Sin got a title of her own. And now looking to add a World Cup to the resume. Couple miscues along the way here. But in great position. And we're gonna see again our next semifinal coming up for Strepo and Tabora. And then the two winners will bowl each other for the World Cup title. There's another look at our TV set here, very cool. Uh, they came in this morning. And set everything up. Local TV, Telemax, Channel 6. Yenny, what a week for her. Again, she led this thing from game number two. Erin, that's, that's quite an impressive performance. I mean, 40 games total, uh, and she was your leader from game two. It's pretty incredible. You mentioned that she just, she matched up well. She's got the some of the tricks, and of course, uh, being very tall and, and having the wingspan, uh, you know, Made all the difference for her. Uh, and everybody was watching, just in awe of the things. She almost shot 300 again in the beginning of uh, match play. I'm sure we'll see more of her in the near future. Right, 197 for Yeni Wagner. Robin advances, 227, 197. She will vote for the title here. Her opponent will be determined here coming up in one moment. Una momento, 4 5 4 our defending champion, Jenny Wagner. Thank you very much. 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 Thank Again, it will be our two seed, Rocio Restrepo of Colombia, taking on Trisa Lynn Tabora of the Philippines. Rocio, many of us very familiar with Trisa Lynn. Uh, she quietly did her thing here. Uh, we didn't hear much from her this week, uh, besides on the scoreboard. Uh, and very impressed uh, with her performance and resilience. And uh, she battled, she was in the top five the entire week. And uh, just, uh, again, quietly plugging along. Each bowler has two practice shots on each line. And Pisaya Lean is going to be on the left lane doing the first shot. They'll take a couple shots of practice here and then we'll get underway. Uh, we do appreciate everybody stopping in all week long and today especially here for the finals. Uh, first match, it was CT Raman over Yenny Wegner, our defending champion. So we will not have a repeat winner here in 2017. Uh, turning back to hands of time a little bit, back in 2008, the very venue, same setup. Uh, it was Team USA's Derek Oaf winning 
on the men's side and Jasmine Young Nathan of Singapore on the women's side. So an opportunity today for Team USA's Jacob Budgeff to reclaim the World Cup title and bring it back to the U.S. Uh, essentially defending that title here successfully in Edermasio. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing that unfold later today. But right now our second women's semifinal coming up next here at Bowl 300. This is Matt Canizar alongside Aaron McCarthy. And uh, a lot of miles standing on uh, behind these lanes at the counter here this week. And it's been a, a pleasure bringing you the live coverage wire to wire from the World Cup here. Now, Aaron, we've been here for over a week already, and uh, only so much bowling you can do, but uh, Edermasio, uh, pretty tasty town, and a lot of things going on, and they really took care of the bowlers here. A lot of entertainment and food and different things. Do uh, you have a favorite part of the city and the experience outside of uh, the actual bowling part? Well, I'm going to be honest. I was a little tired this week. I'm not sure I made it past 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. most of the nights, <laughs> but the, the entertainment they had after the box of bowling outside the, the Bowl Fest 300, that uh, was pretty cool. I know that um, Catalonia, he had a DJ that he set up and played for the various uh, countries and continents. Um, so that was kind of cool. But we haven't done, done as much sightseeing as we probably would have liked to. Right. Well, Hermosillo, again, known for uh, delicious steaks and, of course, your authentic Mexican fare. Uh, so we had a little bit of everything. Uh, for the players, bowling six games a day. Uh, qualifying was 24 games over four days. Cut the field from 54 on the women's side down to 24 for an additional eight games. After 32 games, pinfall totals determined the top eight. They advanced to round robin match play. Uh, and then pinfall again based on uh, 40 games. Bonus pins included for each win in match play uh, determined our four semifinalists. We had 68 countries represented here at the World Cup. The biggest event uh, that there is in terms of how many countries participate. So very cool. Made a lot of friends this week. Um, and I think also it's all really part of the experience. Uh, just meeting great people that you're definitely going to keep in touch with now, especially because of social media and the likes. Good luck. I absolutely agree. There's, there's not another event like this, not in bowling and not in any other sport. So everyone's so friendly and the friendships that you make are pretty special. So no re-oil for this match. And our second semifinal, the Cristalina Tabora stepping up first for the Philippines. Orsio Restrepo, her opponent, uh, awaiting her turn. Match play a little bit different here too uh, at the World Cup. Uh, each player just throws one shot. And Aaron, did that throw you off at all during the week or early on during match play? Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it was. Obviously a little bit different than how the PBA or PWA style, but uh, keeps the pace of play up. Trouble for Rocio, first frame, 2-8-10. We saw a bunch of those this week. We talked about a little bit of hang to the outside. It's definitely not difficult to do. All right, taking a look at the standings for the week. Rocio averaging 220.95, second highest uh, in the building. Bowling great, especially uh, late yesterday, and almost overtaking Wegner for that top spot. She gets two there, uh, so she'll be playing from behind here after the opening frame. But no shock uh, on the, the Colombian side. Um, any one of their players who could have qualified for this event uh, certainly would have contended uh, for the championship here. We saw Claire Guerrero win it in 2014 and 15. 
Uh, and Rocio explained their selection process. Uh, pretty simple, they, they have a 64 game tryout process in Columbia, a variety of lane conditions and such. Shot there by Rocio. But uh, they're tryouts and, and there's a, a point system just like you have on Team USA, essentially uh, on the various patterns and different segments. Uh, and then the all events winner, the one with the most points uh, after the 64 games is the one who qualifies for the World Cup. Uh, so it's been a battle between Clara and Rocio the last few years. Uh, and here is Rocio, but that team uh, incredibly deep with those, those two, uh, Andrew Ramirez, Mir Rodriguez, uh, and some young players, Laura Plaza's coming up. Uh, so they upset the United States uh, in the final frames at PAMCON on their home turf last year. Uh, and now they are ready and fired up for the World Championships coming up at the end of the month. Rocio talked a little bit about that on the live stream uh, earlier in the week. Uh, and that really was kind of a defining moment for them to uh, step up when they needed to to win that PAMCON team gold uh, and show that they are ready for potentially the next level. Sabor here in the second frame. Staring down the 10 pin. Aaron, you mentioned uh, carry being an issue for you this week, uh, whether it was ball roll or angle. Uh, we saw a lot of eights and nines, and, and then at the same time, we saw a lot of flat tens as well. Um, what, what did you experience, and how did you try to figure that out? You said. If you didn't figure out your angles and you didn't you didn't get something right to carry, uh, you're going to be in trouble. And you made it almost to the TV show. Uh, you must have figured something out at some point, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit frustrating. Uh, day one, I think nerves just got in the way. I didn't make very good shots. And then day two, I thought I figured something out. I went 203 over. And then the rest of the way, I felt like I kind of just grinded. I never had that specific ball reaction I was looking for, not because of the equipment, not because of the lane conditions. I just couldn't create the shape that I wanted to get into the pocket. Uh, I had no problems doubling. It was just you know, getting that three, four bagger each game that a lot of the women were able to, to create. So I guess it's kind of back to the drawing board for me. You know, I hadn't really bowled in seven or eight weeks just because of my back injury. So I mean, I, I'm pretty happy with my performance. Obviously, I wanted to make the top four, but I can't really complain too much. Uh, the top four have obviously uh, earned their way that way. So. We did, uh, we did see you last time uh, on the U.S. Open TV show uh, in horrible pain. You did take some time off. We, we talked about that throughout the week uh, and in our preview story for this event as well. Uh, some rehab, all different things. Got ready for Team USA camp. So uh, both of you guys, you and Jacob, both overcoming injuries to bowl as well as you did this week. Uh, no doubt some uh, inspired youngsters out there uh, ready to someday come and take your job as well. <laughs> so we, we call it the, uh, the future for the sport, but we saw a lot of them in the building this week, young bowlers uh, just coming in and just taking it all in, and they're looking forward to the next level for them. Yeah, the entire atmosphere in the center the entire week has been actually really good. It's, it's never been empty. Tons of spectators. All right, so now we just talked about the match play format all week long, and now they've gone to... Uh, We've got the, the TV style going. Yeah, hey, we were just joking before. So <laughs> so here we are. So Rocio going to show throw uh, her second shot here. I'll show you the scoreboard after that. So open double for her. And one more for the three bag. Rocio describes herself as uh, pretty reserved most of the time, but there, there's, there's some fire. You can see it. Uh, she likes to uh, play to the crowd, be an entertainer. You see that when she's on TV. Uh, we have some great pictures from her, from her, her TV events, and so much emotion uh, after her PWBA titles and such. Uh, her interviews are great. Uh, and I think if she throws a few more shots like that, uh, we'll see some fire for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. She's a very passionate player. Uh, 
And Krista Lynn Tabora of the Philippines. Doubling up here. Got another look at our venue. Some great support from the local community, as you see by the, the advertisers. Bull 300 has been our venue and has been terrific all week, uh, as has Tabora, averaging 219.97 and turning in a six and two match play record. She had the best record uh, of all eight women. Down her way into the final four. Trying to continue success for the Philippines here at the World Cup. One more great shot, all 10 go down. Peng Nipomasino of the Philippines holding the record for World Cup titles in three different decades. So definitely, again, great tradition for this event in the Philippines. And Tabor trying to carry that on. See her. It's a, a little warm in the bowling center today. So many folks coming to support the event. She's fanning herself there, trying to stay cool. Rocio working on three in a row. She's down one pin. So we've got ourselves a, a great semifinal winner. We'll meet CT Raman of Malaysia for the championship. It looked like that one got a little bit wide. Uh, we talked a lot about angles and how important it was to find the right angles. Uh, that one wide and not driving hard enough to get that 10 out. Uh, I've noticed that it's almost a little bit better to be slightly light uh, in the center. The carry just is a bit better. Rocio for the spare. No problem. <laughs> Terrific spare shooting on our women's side this week. As you said, some trouble carrying, so shooting a lot of single pins. And here at the World Cup, a showcase of the best Cubica AMF has to offer from the lanes, the machines, lane machines, Ball returns, furniture, uh, top of the line scoring system. And going back to 1965, this event, uh, 53 years strong, showcasing uh, different AMF, cubic AMF centers around the world. Uh, this week, Hermesio Meiko for the third time, sixth time in Mexico. Terrific host. Next year, who knows? Rocio got that early hook, but able to chip the four. I did say, we did see a lot of chip fours, tons of them. So the uh, the high hit uh, seemed to be very effective. Yeah. Take a look at the scores now. Our sixth frame here, second semifinal. Got to meet a lot of Great talent this week, some youngsters. Artemis Hujikovas, two-hander from Latvia, 16 years old, youngest player in the field. Antonetta Costa, 80 years old, from Azores, oldest player. Uh, young man from Spain was 64. A young left-hander from Russia on the ladies' side, Maria Koschel, 17. 18-year-old Lorna Scott from England. Uh, all very bright young talent, and uh, Amagera especially touched on that while she was here uh, in the booth with us. She's been doing this for a dozen times already. She's been to 12 World Cups, won two of them, uh, but feels that uh, the world really has caught up, and there's some great talent uh, all across the globe now. Pretty much do it at any age that you'd like.
Here's Deborah now, working on four in a row. Uh, only open door here, uh, second frame, left a, left a 10 pin, otherwise perfect. Garcia started with a split. Uh, that really is the difference here. High flush, one more for the Philippines. Crystal Lynn in control. Do you appreciate everybody being here? Again, we're uh, very proud to be able to be part of the World Cup each year. An amazing tradition that dates back to 1965. Uh, but if you're here and you're in the chat room and you like what you're seeing, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, let the folks at Keep It Game F know that you were here, that you tuned in, you enjoyed it, and numbers numbers don't lie. It always helps, um, and that will help get us perhaps an invitation to the 2018 event, uh, wherever that may be. Last year was Shanghai, a very cool experience. Uh, sometimes they'll announce it during the banquet uh, as they celebrate this year's winners. Not sure if that's going to happen, but wherever we are, uh, we'd love to be there uh, bringing it to you live. So uh, give us a thumbs up, please. I'll let the folks know. And now back to the action. Rocio Restrepo trying to stay in this second semifinal. She doubles up. So she is down 22 halfway through. Got a Great crowd watching online. Remember to share. If you're watching, tell your friends. Share the link to today's video. Let them know. If you want to check out the results from the rest of the week, uh, how the players got to this point, there's an information uh, link in the box below your video window. Uh, follow the scores and standings. Take you to the Cubic AMF homepage. Uh, a lot of great information there. Uh, some cool feature stories about the players, where they come from, what they're all about, uh, especially those who uh, maybe we didn't hear about on the leaderboards. Here is Restrepo now, looking for three in a row, down 22. Got that one wide again. And we saw again that hang spot to the right, two eight tens. Not hard to leave this week. Uh, she did so in the, the first frame. Uh, now just the eight pin, so a fortunate break there. with the spare, but she's in trouble, Aaron. Uh, again, a quiet, very quiet. Crystal Lynn Tabora uh, piling on the strikes here. She's been good at doing that all week. Such an even keel player, you can't really tell if she's nervous or stressed or anything. Sometimes that's the best. Well, after this shot, we'll take a look at the scoreboard. Pretty much nothing but strikes for the right-hander from the Philippines. And one more. So she's got a six-pack in control of this match against Sierra Restrepo. Take a look at the scores now. Hard to not be impressed uh, with this young lady and her performance. I know we keep saying that, but uh, here she is on the verge of advancing to the championship match at the World Cup. So 
280, her max score. Best Rocio could do is 237. Light hit leaves a two pin with a string and control. So this 41 foot oil pattern, Tavora making it look nice and easy here. Garcia gonna step up and close things out, try to put some pressure on her at least. Heading into the final frame. Very nice to see everybody checking in, saying hello. Let us know where you're from, roll call. Watch the final frames here. Where are you tuning in from? <laughs> These great camera angles and things you're seeing here. Uh, brought to you by the fine folks at Telemax Channel 6 here in El Masillo. Had some good media coverage all week long for the World Cup. And the pride that the Mexican players uh, felt this week and talking to them just with the, the crowd support was uh, pretty unbelievable. We'll talk about that in one moment. Here's Rocio and Trouble got that one out and never made it back. She is going to be donezo here. Rocio, what a great week. Here at the World Cup. So there will be no sweep for Colombia. Be very proud. Now, Aaron, some of the discussion this week was uh, was about the World Series of Bowling, other things going on around the world, uh, and you know, for Jacob and potentially for you as well to uh, be here at the World Cup instead. Uh, Jacob put it in pretty good perspective uh, about that pride we mentioned with the Mexican players uh, and representing your country, Team USA on your back. Um, I would say I got the impression there's there was no decision to be made. There was nothing like being at an event like this representing USA. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to agree. I think you know, representing the country at the World Cup is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The tournaments like the World Series or any other events that we might have missed out on, I mean, those will always be there. I know he bowls for a living, but, uh, you know, this is part of his living. He, he wanted to make Team USA, and I, I don't think there was ever a choice uh, or a decision to be made in his mind. I think he always knew that this would be his, his decision. That's something much greater than in bowling, just your average event, you're representing your country, so it's no greater feeling. We saw that with the Mexican players. Arturo Estrada led to this event the first two days and through five games on day three. Uh, he was in the top eight the entire week. The emotions and the, the fanfare was pretty amazing. Uh, for him, making the top eight actually came down to his final fill ball. Uh, we saw some great performances on the men's side at the end of match play. I'm sorry, the end of the round of 24. Uh, Ildemar Ruiz throwing the front 10, 289, to go around a couple guys. Uh, Ray Tease throwing the last four or five to maintain his spot in the top eight. Uh, Estrada, uh, 467 on his fill ball. Missed the cut by three pins. Uh, he strikes there, forces a roll off. Uh, heartbreaking for sure, especially here uh, in his home country. Uh, but great young man. Uh, great week for him, and Maribel Orozco uh, actually made match play, uh, and it was a time when the local bowling fans were able to be here out of work. Uh, things wrapped up last night, so uh, they were here to cheer her on, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, all week, all week long. The support they've received is quite incredible. It didn't matter where they were bowling in the center; you could you could just listen to the fans behind them and figure it out. So Restrepo now up on lane 19. She's doubled up. She can get to 222. With one more here, that'll essentially force Tavor to keep it on the lane. 
you count. Good shot. Great shot by Rocio. Great shot. She liked that one. Take a look at the scoreboard now. I'll set the stage a little bit for you. 2-22 with three in the tenth. So you'll start it with the 2 8 10. Pulled a great game. Just uh, got the ball right a couple times and it hung on her. Uh, but when your opponent's throwing nine strikes a game, not, not a whole lot you can do at that point. All right, here's to board now. That's a winner in style. All 10 back, just as she has all day and all week long. So it will be Cristal Lintibora of the Philippines going on to the title match coming up next with CT Raman of Malaysia. Uh, Aaron, I'm not gonna make you make a choice here. I'm not gonna make you pick. Uh, I think both incredibly talented players. It's gonna be a great match. Uh, we personally know CT a little bit better just from her time uh, in the United States. Uh, but again, the uh, Sneak attack here by Crystal Lynn this week uh, has been pretty phenomenal. I think it should be a, a pretty even match. All right, if you have any questions uh, for me, for Aaron, this is the time. Uh, my name is Matt Canizaro, Aaron McCarthy of Team USA. We're watching our final shots here of our first women's semifinal, our second one now. We're moving along, uh, and our, our two winners are about to meet. But uh, we have a few minutes here while we get ready for the next match. Uh, so ask your questions. Uh, this also is a good time to hit the thumbs up at the bottom of your video window. Tell us that you like what you're seeing. Uh, also tell your friends, a great championship match, minutes away. So share it on social media, Facebook, Twitter. And join us here at 4300. <laughs> Right. Final score. The winner of this second semifinal. 249. Please, a warm applause for our representative from Colombia, Rocio Restrepo. Muchas gracias, señor representante de Colombia. Muchas felicidades por un gran torneo. All right. 249, 222. Crystalline Tabora advances. We'll have our championship match coming up in just a couple of moments, folks. Go grab yourself a drink, hit the restroom, and hurry back here to Bowl TV. Uh, Matt Canizaro and Aaron McCarthy live at Bowl 300. Hermosillo, Mexico, title match moments away. Time for the big final to get the World Cup, World Cup champion of this 53rd Kubica AMF. Bowling World Cup. From Malaysia, City Safiya. And from the Philippines, Isaya Lin. The bowler from Malaysia has three shots on each lane.
Muchas felicidades a nuestra campeona mundial de las Filipinas, Isaya Lin. Congratulations to Isaya Lin, our world champion. Now we will start our presentation. I will ask the four bowlers, the four women bowlers to come up here. 
Jenny Webner from Sweden. Siti Safiya from Malaysia. Rocio Restrepo de Colombia. And Kusayalin from the Philippines. Vamos a empezar nuestra presentación de los trofeos. Empezando por el juego alto, high game. That goes to Jenny Wagner from Sweden. Thank you. By Stephanie Dalby, Marketing Director, Kubica IMF. Semifinalistas, semifinalists, Rocío Restrepo de Colombia, hace la presentación Cliff Adar, director de Aftermarket de Cúbica, y el ingeniero Alfonso Reina de Constructora Caf, con su plan patrocinador de este evento. Semifinalists, Rocío Restrepo, Cliff Adar, Aftermarket Director of Cúbica AMF, and ingeniero Alfonso Reina, Comes to plan, one of the major sponsors of this tournament, presented the awards. Second semi-finalist, Jenny Wagner from Sweden, is also being presented by Cliff Adar and Ingeniero Alfonso Reina. Muchas gracias. Ahora, para nuestro segundo lugar de Malasia, Señorita Siti Safiya presenta el señor Martín Fava, presidente de la Confederación Panamericana de Boliche. Now for the second place runner up, Siti Safiya, Mr. Martín Fava, president of Tapcon, is present. Now for our world champion from the Philippines. Prisaya Lin, presenting Chairman of the, board, of the Board, Cubica AMF, Pat Sinelo, and Licenciado Jesus Alberto Canoveles, one of the, our major sponsors. Our World Cup champion is Philippe Ferry, Kimika AMF World Cup.